Hello chess fam, it's me National Master Jesse James and it's time for another installment for How to Play the Fried Liver. Alright, this one we're going to be taking a look at the idea about playing Knight C to E7 to defend. Alright, here we go. We start with E4, E5, Knight of 3 attacks the pawn, Knight C6 defends the pawn. We got our Italian over here and well, Black goes and plays Knight F6 for the two knights defense and here we go Knight G5 putting pressure on F7 over here here We're looking to attack and win but of course black's gonna go ahead and defend the only way he knows how he plays pawn to D5 And well, we're gonna go ahead and take with our pawn here and black makes the mistake and plays Knight takes D5 wah, wah, the mistake remember there's so many different ways to play this you should not be taking this pawn here on D5 Black can play the knight to a5 variation, the Polario defense, and I definitely think you'll be having a good time, at least if you're playing the black pieces. With that being said, they walked right into it. Let's go ahead and stomp them. Here, after knight takes on d5, what do you play? It's fried liver attack. Knight takes on f7. Here, we're attacking both the queen and the rook, so there really is no choice here. Black must go ahead and take. So, king takes on f7, and here, what's the follow-up? Here, we do a double attack with that queen. We go ahead and play... Queen to f3 check, attacking both the king and the knight over here. And, well, black has only one move. He must go ahead and play king to e6. And for those of you who don't know, well, if something else gets played, like let's just say king to e8, white is immediately winning with bishop takes on d5. Here we just have a nice double threat here. Bishop takes on c6, looking to win a pawn, maybe even the rook if they're not playing too well. And also the simple idea of queen to f7 for checkmate. All right, back to the game. Here, black, of course, plays king to e6, defending the knight. You have one, two defenders. We have one, two attackers. Let's go ahead and start developing with threats. White to move. What do you do? Simple chess. Let's keep developing our pieces. We play knight to c3 here. And now we now have the three attackers. And this is where black goes and, and plays knight c to e7. Now, we will be looking at other variations where black gets more aggressive. And actually, computer likes this better. And plays, well, knight to to b4. Not only does the knight defend the other knight on d5 here, but there's also a threat of knight takes on c2 check. Like I said, we'll look at this in a different variation. In this one, we're going over knight to e7 here. And well, um, white's going to show us a very good, instructive way to win this game. And it's actually white to move. What is the best move here? Now, there's two moves to get the advantage. I would have definitely played the other move as I, I guess I would say a more, uh, more classical player. You know, not as aggressive as, uh, was it Gluero over here? So, uh, okay, what do you do here as white? All right, hopefully you push pause, try to figure it out. What do you do? Here, we're actually going to go ahead and play pawn to d4. What was, what was the other move here? I uh, would have played the meek and, uh, well, m maybe best strategic move. Just go ahead and castle, right? Before I go ahead and attack, I want to get my king to safety. And this is defi definitely Russian school thought here. With that being said, d4 is the best move by computer, giving a plus 1.8 advantage. After d4 here, well, black went ahead and played pawn to c6. Okay, is there a reason why we can't take here? No, you cannot. In fact, there's many different ways to play, but I'll go ahead and do the easy variation here. Here, there's about five variations, all giving a plus five advantage. And here, I'll go ahead and say, well, queen e4 check is a very good way to go ahead and win back your piece. After this, black must go ahead and move the king somewhere. And, well, we're just going to go ahead and play. Knight takes on d5, winning back our piece, plus, as you can see, having a very good position here. All right, back to the game. This is why the pawn was not taken, because it opens up the king for attack. Instead, black did play that pawn to c6 move. And here again, we have two very good moves here. White to move. What did he play here? He went ahead and played bishop g5, another move I like very much. Notice how white's back row is already empty here. And look at black's row. All their pieces are still pretty much stuck at the beginning. It's only the knights and king that have moved. And unfortunately, this is just not good for them. All right, black went ahead and played. Pawn to h6 here, and here, well, you could go ahead and play bishop h4, but don't waste any time at all. Here, white went ahead and played, bishop takes on e7 here. Notice that if you did try to move bishop to h4 here, well, then black can go ahead and play something like g5, and this actually does get equality. Bishop over to g3, and bishop g7. You can see that black gained some space, but also was able to develop the bishop and make a defensive idea. That's why we don't waste any time here. After h6, bishop takes on e7, and here, well, bishop takes back. Yes, there was a little bit of development that got played, but we didn't waste time, and here it's white to move. 
All right, here's the question for you. Should we castle kingside or should we go queenside? Both of them are good moves, but I definitely like one better than the other. Which one do you think? I don't know if you pushed pause or maybe you just knew instantly using your intuition which one it was. Which one was it? It was castling queenside, of course. After castling queenside, we get our rook on the open file here, and we're trying to go ahead and put pressure along the queen here too. Notice that also whenever you castle queenside, the rook is on the D file, and this rook is ready to slide over to the E file. This only takes two moves. Notice that if you did castle kingside, it takes one, and then we're going to go two, and then that's three. Remember, every move matters, and so this will definitely waste a bit of time here. Let's not waste any time at all. We'll castle queenside. All right, black went ahead and played rook over to f8 and a nice move here here the rook did come out to attack the queen but you know what our queen wants to move anyways let's move this queen and make a threat here the queen ran to e4 here and now we're putting pressure on the e5 pawn okay black got a little too aggressive here and played rook takes f2 it is now game over i think they played rook takes f2 here for some ideas about maybe running back to f7 and then to g8 and uh well all right here's another good question for you should we take with the pawn or should we go ahead and take with the queen? All right, hopefully you push pause. Which one was it? Remember the rules. Whenever you're attacking your opponent, you need open files and diagonals. So believe it or not, queen takes e5 check is actually not good. After this, black is the one who is actually doing pretty well here. The king runs back to f7. Uh, let's go ahead and play knight takes d5. Pawn takes, bishop takes check. And here the king runs to g6, and now you can either run to h7 or s7. Yes, you could try to do these checks with bishop e4 check. The king goes back to f7, and now you're saying, well, dang, I don't want to go with a d5 because, well, they're going to keep going back and forth. And in this position, white does definitely does not want to draw. We are playing for the win here. So back to the game. At this point, after the rook takes on f2, we do not take with the queen, but we take with the Pawn. Remember, we need open files and diagonals. At this point, we just opened up the default. This knight is going to fall, and, uh, well, the king's just going to be uh, running away for safety. All right, black went ahead and played bishop g5 check. Simple chess, just play king over to b1. Of course, we're not going to be blocking with any pieces around here. And here, black went ahead and played rook to d2 here, and this is just not good at all. I mean, in all... Uh, <laughs> Uh, just to be fair, this was just losing in any variation at all. But uh, here, the game ends pretty fast here. Of course, we understand Black's idea. Black is very scared of all the pressure on d5. So Black is hoping, well, I'll go ahead and be able to make a trade, and maybe things will just settle down. Er, this did not happen. In fact, White finds a very nice refutation move. What they play here? All right, they went ahead and played. Pawn to h4, kicking this bishop away. Notice this bishop really doesn't have any good squares to move to. And if the bishop moves away, well, then we're just going to be able to grab this rook for free. Remember, you can't go to f4. This knight's not defending. Queen takes. You can't go to e3. Same thing. Queen takes. You know, all these variations are just not good for you. So here, black went ahead and played. Rook takes. And this is exactly what white wants. Last rook gets into the game. And now, again, you see all... Our pieces, all four of them, are ready to attack. Yes, black does have five, but look at this. Asleep, asleep, asleep. Oof. And this one's being attacked right now, too. Bishop takes on h4. And here, well, you got a plethora of moves, or a lot of moves that you can uh, play here to win on d5. Which one should, should you do? Take a second here to see what is the correct variation to win. All right, hopefully this one didn't take you too long. Believe it or not, knight takes on d5 is a very good move. Because after pawn takes, well, you do have two good moves here. You can either do rook takes on d5 or bishop takes on d5. In the game, rook takes d5 was played, which got to a very nice win. But bishop takes d5 check also works out really well here. Notice that the king really has no good squares to move to. If the king goes back to e7, well, queen takes h4 check is going to win the bishop. Okay, what about if king to d7? Well, now you're going to be losing your queen after something like, I don't know, bishop takes b7 check. And we'll, we'll go ahead and take this queen afterwards if we can't find a nice mate here. In the game, rook takes d5 was played instead, which also makes plenty of sense. Remember, there's many ways to roam. In winning positions, there's many different ways to win. Don't get caught up about which one is best, at least if you're playing a chess game. I would go ahead and just win the game. Remember, the win is what is very important. Uh, some people will come to me afterwards and say, hey, you missed a faster win. Okay, cool. You know, as long as I find a win, that's what's important to me. Yeah, after the game, we can definitely discuss. Anyways, after rook takes on d5, here we see another very strong idea. Here we set up a very nice discovery. And, of course, the rook gets a free tempo off the queen. Eh, the queen went ahead and moved over to g5. 
And here we go. It's actually forced checkmate. Here, rook to d6 check got played. King to e7 and rook to g6. At this point, black went ahead and resigned, as there's really no good moves to happen here. Uh, for instance, let's just say we move the queen over to d2 here, looking to try and get checkmate on d1, or at least, you know, at least making a threat. But here we have too many forced moves. Computer again is saying it's just forced checkmate. Rook takes on g7, king to e8, and everything just comes a check. Rook g8, king to d7, bishop b5 check, king over to c7, queen c4 check, and here the king runs to b6. Unfortunately, you cannot run to b8 as it's going to be mate. Oof, okay, so the king goes to b6, and again, just checks just keep reigning. Rook over g6, yes, you can block it with pieces. This will make the game last a little bit longer. But after king a5, it's just going to be queen to a4 for check and mate. Remember, this was the variation of the fried liver, which was a knight c to e7 variation. Remember this very strong idea, pawn to d4 opening up this king. If you remember this, you should be able to open up the king and attack him. All right, guys, hope you enjoyed this. Don't forget to give us that like and subscribe, and we'll see you in the next video. <laughs>